Anton, what is, what is the picture for the financials now that we've gotten all of them out? Well, the banks, mm -hmm. good enough. Valuations were cheap. Right. Um, you know, everybody was wondering. They were down. They recovered because they got cheap enough. And the regional banks are even cheaper, and the smaller ones are even cheaper. So at the end of the day, that's what we're going to get. People are going to look and go, where's the value? Right. You know, are things stable? Loan losses are not a problem. Mm -hmm. uh, we may have peaked in terms of interest rate margins. Right. Earnings estimates went up all year last year because rates kept going up, and the stocks went down. Now we may actually have the opposite. Earnings estimates may actually be dropping, not radically, because there will be some credit and there will be some you know, lack of margin increase. But the stocks are cheap. I mean, there are all sorts of financials that are seven, eight times earnings that are potentially takeover targets. Right. And Let's home in on Goldman Sachs, since that's the one that's really losing today. Has Goldman lost its way to an extent? I mean, with the losses associated with the consumer unit, that seemed like a detour that did not pay off. Whereas when you see Morgan Stanley, they made all of these acquisitions along the way. They emphasized wealth management. They moved to fee base. And they really proved that they were planning for this sort of environment in a better fashion than Goldman. Well, I mean, it, it, it's really clear that also some people were wrong-footed, right? Mm -hmm. Some people on the street were short Morgan Stanley and long Goldman because of a big discrepancy in book value. But look at the return on equity. Look at the return on assets, right? Substantially outperforming. And, you know, we talked about this earlier, but every decade or so, someone says, I've got a better credit mousetrap. And you know what? The underwriting credit is still, you've got to know your customers, you know, it, there's no new algorithm that actually makes it work. You can look at all those fintechs out there. They're all having trouble getting funded. At the end of the day, deposits matter. And that's what banks have. They're FDIC chartered. They have deposits. Goldman doesn't have branches, doesn't have retail deposits in a big way, doesn't have core funding. And so it's more wholesale type funding, much more expensive. That's one of the interesting things about the Goldman call. I mean, David Solomon addressed it specifically during the earnings call yeah. this morning, basically talking about the pullback that they want in certain parts of the consumer market, specifically the Marcus lending side mm -hmm. of things. They expect that book, to the business, to kind of tail off, just let it roll off. But what was curious later on in the call, you know, Goldman is very closely associated with the Apple card, right? That right. Apple card business. And you think that they would address that in some kind of a negative way. But Solomon went out of his way to talk about how that is a long-term play and that it'll pay dividends over the longer term. So even with the consumer pullback in certain parts of the market, they're going to still keep that lending business in certain key parts, and they're certainly going to focus on the deposit-taking side of things. That's going to be a key for them. Yeah, how does that fit in, do you think, into Goldman's strategy? Well, I mean, again, if they're how pairing does, back how does the that... Consumer. Well, it's pairing back part of the consumer, yeah. right? Really, what they're, what they're not saying is subprime consumer, right? The yeah. Apple card is not subprime. It's, it's a better tier, better credit. Look, uh, all the things we did coming out of COVID, all that stimulus made credit incredible for everybody. So there were lots of outsized profits made. Credit was better behaved than ever, even in the subprime, because everybody was flush. You know, now the consumer is starting to tap into savings, starting to tap into credit more. The only good news about the consumer is they have jobs. There's still jobs out here. And, and so that ability to pay still exists. But the subprime consumer is stressed. They still have jobs for now. I mean, yeah. I don't want to be yeah. Debbie Downer or anything, but when the Fed says, you know, unemployment will go higher, it will go higher. <laughs> so so the, the key part about that is Goldman has been the big part of the job loss story on Wall Street so far. Yeah. 3,200 jobs for the record that they say were eliminated last week as part of that kind of process of job cutting there. I, I, I spoke to Sharon Yashai, the CFO at Morgan Stanley. I asked her specifically whether on her side of things, they've already cut jobs. They yeah. announced them back in December. Two percent or so. Right. And so they, she basically said that, of course, things can change, but they feel as though for right now, given the state of play that they see, that they feel like their job force is the right size, mm. that they feel that their cost structure is the right size. Now, nothing is set in stone, but she feels as though this is a good spot for them with the, with the, with the letting that they've had out in their jobs, which was significantly smaller, right, than Goldman Sachs's total number jobs cut. Yeah. What can we learn about the economy from what we've heard so far uh, from the bank CEOs, Anton, in terms of the environment that they will operate in and the environment that we will exist in? Sure, sure. I mean, they're all cautiously optimistic. I think Brian Moynihan is the only one who sort of said, well, mild recession. I mean, we didn't hear the word hurricane out of Jamie this time. Right. Thank goodness, because they, that moves markets. Uh, but the reality is, is no one's seen it yet. The only place we're seeing the cracks is subprime consumer. So everybody's being cautious. You're seeing slight reserve building going out there. Obviously, subprime consumer, bigger bills like, like Goldman. But, yeah, uh, the economy is still pretty good. And by the way... If the economy does get better somewhat, if the Fed starts to provide more clarity, 
I mean, even Morgan Stanley CEO James Gorman said it on this call. He feels as though if things start to become more clear, CEOs get more clarity in what's happening, if inflation is kind of peaked, then all of a sudden you could start seeing deal flow come back. We're right. talking IPOs, mergers and acquisitions, debt and equity underwriting. Right. All of those things could be significantly higher once there's a clear macroeconomic picture.